There was a time of great fitna, a time of great trial and tribulation during the lifetime of Imam Ahmad, when there were some of the core beliefs of Islam were being challenged, and unfortunately there were certain rulers as well of the Muslim lands who had also succumbed to these incorrect beliefs about some of the issues in regards to Islam and the Quran. They decided to enforce their incorrect beliefs upon everyone else. So the scholars lined up to debate them, to challenge them, and they began to eventually imprison and even torture and kill some of these scholars who would oppose them. They literally went through all the scholars till the last one left standing was none other than Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala. The ruler had called Imam Ahmad a couple of times, tried to convince him. Imam Ahmad had debated the people, the scholars or the intellectuals who were on the side of these incorrect beliefs. And he had defeated all of them in their debates. One day he got fed up with this, he got tired with this and he said, I am the king, I'm the ruler. I'm not going to take some nonsense from some imam or some sheikh. I'm not going to have him tell me what's right and what's wrong. He sends his soldiers over to Imam Ahmed's house. I want you to chain him up like a criminal. Walk him through the center of the town, through the town square, through the marketplace, so everyone can see him humiliated. And then I want you to bring him here. Then we will lash him and we will torture him and we will punish him until he does not concede. So Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal is now chained and he's being brought through the town and everyone's gathered around, everyone's watching, everyone's looking, everyone's gawking, you know, shocked and surprised at what's happening. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah says, I started to think to myself, Ahmad, what are you doing to yourself? What are you doing to yourself? You're humiliating yourself. You're embarrassing yourself. Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi have provided you a concession. You can say whatever this oppressive tyrant ruler, whatever he wants to hear, you can tell him whatever he wants to hear. As long as you believe the truth in your heart, you're good, you're fine, you're okay. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you humiliating yourself? Do you really want to leave this as your legacy? Humiliation, torture? I could handle imprisonment. Imprisonment wasn't a problem for me. But physical torture was something I wasn't sure I would be able to deal with. Because different people have tolerances for different things. He goes, they could imprison me for the rest of my life. I would just pray and recite Quran and worship Allah for the rest of my days. I wouldn't care. But physical torture was something that I was uncomfortable with for obvious reason. So he said, I started to think to myself and I got to the point where I began to rationalize. I saw the looks in people's eyes. I heard the soldiers talking about torture and lashes and whipping. And I started to kind of reconsider my stance. Should I be so stubborn? Am I just being stubborn? Should I go ahead and concede, but then believe the truth in my heart and back off? And then he says, as I was thinking this to myself, I felt somebody tugging on my clothes. I turned around and it was a young man. And this young man seemed familiar. And he said, he goes, Ya Imam Ahmad, I'm Abu Haytham. Abu Haytham was the most notorious criminal of that time in that era. Right, he was like Billy the Kid, who was the most wanted man. He said, listen, I steal for a living, I rob people is what I do. And I have been lashed, he said, it is written in the court documents. I have been lashed 18,000 times because of my crimes. But I haven't stopped doing what I do. He said, I serve shaitan for the sake of the dunya. I listen to what shaitan tells me to do for the sake of material worldly gain. But I haven't quit just because of a few lashes, 18,000. He says, you obey Allah for the sake of the deen and the hereafter and the akhirah. Don't you dare, don't you dare ease up on your stance because of a few lashes. Don't you worry about a few lashes. Don't you dare give up a good thing because of lashes. And he said these words to me and he let my shirt go. And the soldiers dragged me on. And that was the last time I ever saw him. But Imam Ahmad said, when he said those words to me, it lit a fire inside of me. And I said, I don't care what they're going to do to me. I'm going to stand firm. And that's exactly what Imam Ahmad did. And eventually, Imam Ahmad became the reason of the preservation of the proper Islamic beliefs and the defeat of this very corrupt movement. And that's why Imam Ahmad, for the rest of his life, wherever he would sit, whenever he would pray, before he would go to sleep, 
he would make dua to Allah for Abu Al-Haytham. Rahim Allahu Abu Al-Haytham. May Allah have mercy on Abu Al-Haytham. May Allah forgive the sins of Abu Al-Haytham. The moral of the story is, never underestimate anyone. Everyone's got something to offer. Everyone's got a potential. Everyone's got untapped, limitless potential. It's just a matter of realizing that ourselves. And then trying to bring something productive to the table. So don't underestimate yourself first and foremost. Secondly, never underestimate anyone because you don't know what they're capable of. You don't know what good deed they've done. Maybe somebody came across Abu Haytham later in their life but they never knew that he was a man who inspired the man who led to the preservation of the proper Islamic beliefs. Nobody would have known that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah knew that. And Abu Haytham knew that.